Good afternoon, precious family. How are you today? We're here to make some yummy, healthy desserts. Isn't that a nice combination, yummy and healthy? Okay, this one is called vegan carob pudding. Very simple. I like simple. We have six avocados. I already did the prep work before in our Vitamix. And we're going to add a half a cup of carob powder. Now in here, it's going to end up tasting like chocolate. Some people have kind of a thing about carob, but in here it'll really taste good. We're going to also add um, three teaspoons of vanilla. And seeing as how I have a few extra avocados, I normally do this with four, but I have an extra couple of avocados. I'm going to add pure stevia vanilla flavored syrup. Just a little bit. Stevia goes a long way. But uh, this kind of augments the agave, which we're also now going to add. Agave, we're adding a half a cup of agave syrup, which you can find just about anywhere now, Winco, all, all over the place, agave. You can use maple syrup if you want, if you don't mind the little bit stronger taste. And then we're going to add some soy milk, or you could use almond milk. We're going to start out with a half a cup, and as we start blending, we'll decide if we need to add a little more, if we want it a little thinner. So we'll do this and see what happens. For those of you who want to get a good soy milk, this West Soy, low fat, plain, without carrageenan, you can get it at the dollar store. Amen. Had to plug the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for dollar stores. 99 cents. 99 cent. Yeah, this is the Dollar Tree dollar store. It carries the West Soy. Although I have seen it at some of the others, but yeah. Now if I can get my lid off of here. Here we go. Let's try this and see what's going to happen. Just want to peek. Sometimes you have to kind of help it just a little bit. Looking good. It'll taste even better. I think we're about there. Now you don't necessarily need a Vitamix, you could do this with just a regular blender. The tops come off easier on the regular blenders. <laughs> I need somebody with a strong hand here. Donna, could you help me for a second? Pull this off of here. Ah. It's a sneaky way to get a taste. Want me to hold it or? Huh? Yeah. My hands aren't as strong as they used to be. That's more than pinching. I need, a, I need a man's hand. There, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now we're going to taste it just to make sure that we've got it like we like it. Mmm, that's good. Okay, we're going to serve this to you in a little bit. Thank you for your attention. That was fast and easy. Carob, vegan carob pudding. No cooking, no milk, no... Anything. All plant. Yes, recipes are on the end of the table. Huh? All right, so my name's Lisa, if you don't know me, and I did not grow up in the Adventist church, so I'm learning new things as we go, and thank goodness for Pinterest, because there's a lot of great vegan recipes online. And this one I think I did find online, and I bring it a lot to potluck because it's very easy. You're all going to know my secret now. This is so easy, <laughs> it's almost embarrassing. So Carla was kind and got me these organic brown rice crisps, which are like Rice Krispies but healthier. And so we're going to use that for the demo one. I made some, and they have regular Rice Krispies. I'm not quite the whole food shopper. There are eight cups for the 9 by 13 size. Uh-oh, somebody took my... What do you need? I had a 9 by 13 pant and... Right Sorry, just a minute. That's not what I had, but that'll work. That'll work. I just need that and the spray. Sorry, I was ready. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this will be good for a 9 by 13. And then you're going to do... One cup of peanut butter, I use this Smart Balance, and you're gonna put it in a saucepan. And then you're gonna also use honey, and I'm 
a frugal <coughs> shopper, so I just got the Walmart brand. I'm sure there are healthier versions of things than what I sometimes use, but I try to do the best with what I can with the budget that I have. So you put this on, I don't know, like medium, medium low heat, and it's already starting to mix together. And it smells yummy too. And then you can also add, I don't want that to melt in there. You're gonna add one, uh-oh, look at me. One teaspoon of vanilla ex extract. And a teaspoon of salt too. And just stir it all up until it's nice and it all comes together. I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. It gets, pretty it gets real liquidy. I'll show you guys and let me get the clumps out. While I'm letting that cook a little more, spray your whatever size baking dish with nonstick cooking spray. So it's all ready. And it, I mean, obviously, you can just cut this recipe in half and make it in the square size dish too. Um, this looks pretty good. See, so easy. I bring this to potluck all the time. It's hard to tell, but it's just runny. That's all you have to do. And then I have my bowl with the brown rice crisps all ready to go. Just dump it in that. It's real liquidy, but what? Yeah, it's real easy to mix. You're, whoo, look at that. Make a mess. Your kids could help you. I think my kid has helped one time. And you just, yeah, exactly. If your kid could read, they could read this because it's very short and easy. And just mix it until it's all coated. Now, the only downside, we are, you know how we're going to serve you guys all these later. The pre-made ones are probably going to be a little bit better in that they're going to stick together and set. This one is kind of hot still. It still tastes good though, but it's, you know, you're going to have to eat it kind of like this. You'll need a spoon for it. So it looks like it's all coated, I think. So I'm just going to dump it in here and you just kind of spread it out. I usually don't use my hand just because it seems kind of gross. But <laughs> I just use the spoon or the spatula and just kind of spread it all out and kind of push down too. I've had a few batches where it doesn't want to set, but it still tastes the same, so I don't know. And there you go. And that's it. So fast and easy. Now don't everybody copy me and bring this to potluck. <laughs> yes. I don't refrigerate it because I feel like it kind of dries it out or something. But I, you know, like I would have made it Friday and then brought it Sabbath, yeah. And it would be, well, you'll see, because you'll probably eat those ones that are already done. And I think it sets up, I don't know. Yeah, I can see it in there. It's set up good. So, yeah. Any other questions? And that's it. So um, we're going to be making something that everybody loves. It's, uh, it's something that I make all the time for my family. Minimum, I use my Vitamix once a day, minimum. So we make this all the time. Um, it's a great dessert and it's um, wonderful. So I've invited a few assistants. We have Lorena. Now she has a, last, a different last name because she just was recently married. What's Mercado? We have Daniel Taves and Liliana Jimenez and I'm so glad they're here to help us today. So the first thing that we're gonna put into our fruit smoothie is an orange. We try to do all our fruit seasonal and as, much, as fresh as possible. So I've asked Daniel to show me, since he's such an expert with a knife, what's the best way to peel an orange? I didn't know this because in Puerto Rico you peel it different, but if you want to take off the skin, Daniel's going to teach you the best way to peel an orange. I don't know if it's the best way, but this is how I peel it. Just cut off the top make a slice down the side. If you cut too far into the orange, when you try to peel it, you'll just rip your orange in half. And you can make however many cuts you want, carefully. If you cut all the way through, get it your hand. Just remove the peel. Okay, so I do two of them for them. 
So, the, so for the recipe, you'll put at least one peeled orange into your, vitam into your blender. You can use any blender. These just happen to be a Vitamix. And do you know what, why we like to eat oranges? <coughs> Vitamins. Yeah, the orange is a powerhouse against things that cause cancers and strengthens the immune system against infections, allergies, the common cold, and the flu. And it helps prevent kidney disease. Since they're full of soluble fibers, oranges can, are helpful in lowering cholesterol. Oranges are full of beta carotene, which is a powerful antioxidant that protects the cells from damage. Beta carotene protects the skin from free radicals and helps prevent the signs of aging. Did you peel both? Not yet. Did you see it squirt? <laughs> it does. Seedless, yes. Yes. Yes, the question was can an orange still be ripe even though it's still green? I believe so because I've had a. So, yeah, I think they put something on the orange to have it change the color at the timing. They gas it? Okay. The next thing that I like to put in my smoothie is a banana. I either put one or two bananas. If you want it to be creamy, then you add more banana to it. And it's a great sweetener. <laughs> Did you know that bananas give you energy? Bananas are a type of protein that the body converts into serotonin known to make you relax and improve your mood and generally make you feel happier. The f you can put one or two, yeah. The vitamin B6 that it has in it contains regul it, it helps you to regulate your blood glucose levels which can affect your mood. It's high in iron and, and they stimulate the production of hemoglobin in the blood and so it helps in cases of anemia. Research has shown that the potassium packed fruit can assist learning by making students more alert. And they have a natural antacid effect in the body. So if you suffer from heartburn, try eating a banana for soothing relief. When you compare it to an apple, it has four times the protein, twice the carbohydrate, three times the phosphorus, five times the vitamin A and iron, and twice the other vitamins and minerals. It is also rich in potassium and is one of the best value foods around. So we're gonna have, we have our orange, our banana, and I also add strawberry. Now I buy my strawberries when it's strawberry season time and I freeze them. But if it's seasonal, again, try to use everything fresh as possible and a cup of, of strawberries in it. Um, strawberries, I put the whole strawberry in. You don't, you don't have to take anything. You want all the nutrients that you can get from your strawberry. Strawberries have many benefits, but I'll give you a few. They help burn stored fat. They boost short-term memory, Harold. <laughs> they are low in calories and high in fiber. They ease inflammation. They lower cardiovascular disease. They promote bone health. They prevent esophageal cancer. They have anti-aging properties. They're good for weight loss and promote eye health. Yeah. The next thing that I like are peaches. And again, I buy them. Right now, when I buy them and I, I cut them up and throw them in my freezer. And I don't peel them. You try to keep everything as natural as possible. And another cup of that for those. Um, Peaches are an excellent source of vitamin A, and they're also rich in vitamin C. Plus, they taste great. Another thing that I put in my smoothie is, a, is pineapple. Where's the pineapple one? 
Okay, pineapples. Um, did you know that having a pineapple in the morning prevents sugar and fat cravings? Pineapple boosts your immune system because of the presence of vitamin C and vitamin A. They strengthen your bones, they're good for eyesight, they help against arthritis and joint pain. Pineapple is also rich in fiber. Pineapples are also beneficial in curing of a sore throat and bronchitis. Now all of these, just like it is, are delicious. But you can also add a sweetener to it. And so I like to add dates into mine. Dates help you maintain regularity. They are rich in magnesium. Magnesium can effectively reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, and other inflammation-related health ailments. But the reason to put dates is in to sweeten your dessert. Um, some people don't like raisins, but in a smoothie, they're great. So I usually add, Daniel doesn't put, when he makes them, he, does, he just puts like, I don't know, six dates in his, but I put dates and and I like to add raisins into mine. Raisins are fat and cholesterol free. They're high in antioxidants. They contain sugars of fructose and glucose for sustained energy. They are a good source of potassium, iron, and dietary fiber, and are virtually sodium free. They enhance your oral health, enhance your bo and bone health. Raisins are rich in iron and copper, which are necessary in the formation of red blood cells. And they also help to correct iron deficiency anemia and promote blood clotting during wound healing. I hope that this information is valuable to you and that you will include more fruits when you eat desserts. So the, after you add this, you just add water and I usually do about three, three fourths of the blender container. And I start slow and just go faster until it's all smooth. So as soon as it's ready, well, I'll get to enjoy it. I've been asked to share just a little bit about the, um, what the Bible says in regard to health, and we call it the eight natural doctors. What do we call it? The eight natural doctors, or the eight doctors of the Bible. Okay, now, you can also understand it in this way. You can understand it as new start, Okay, new start, that's, you could put it together in one word, or you could say start new, okay? Start new, new start, what, however you want to say it. What we're going to do, though, today is we're going to see from the Bible in the creation story, we're going to be able to see the new start principles, okay? The start new principles. So what do we say, what are we looking for when we're doing the new start acronym? New start would be N, meaning nutrition, okay? Now, the next coming in our New START acronym was, would be E, for exercise. W would be water, so we've just spelled new. Nutrition, exercise, water. S would be sunshine. Then T could be temperance. Um, what comes next? A could be air, fresh air. R could be rest, and T could be trust in God. So you've just seen the New START acronym spelled out with Nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, uh, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. Now, if you have your Bibles, I would um, encourage you to look now in Genesis chapter 1. What we're going to do is see from the Bible the New Start principles, or the eight doctors, if you will, right there in the book of Genesis. And then I'll give you just kind of a tip or heads up about the fact that we can also see them in the book of Revelation. So Genesis 1 verse 2, notice what it says. The earth was without fo form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of what? The waters. The waters. Now, were these waters contaminated? No. no, why not? Because God had them there, right? I mean, this is pure. This is before sin came into our earth, before sin was... Uh, not in our universe, but here on the earth. Because you see, Lucifer had probably had, had fallen by this time. Um, 
you know, I'd have to get that one, I'd have to make sure on that one, but that's what I've learned anyways, that's what I've thought. So <clears throat> what we can see is right there from the very beginning, we see waters that are pure waters. Now, think about this for a second. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, we're not going to go there, but you can read about the water of life. Now, so if there's fresh, brand new water at the beginning, there's going to be fresh, brand new water at the end. Do you think we should have fresh, brand new water while we're here between the two? God wants us to have fresh water, clean water, pure water. And so we can learn that from Genesis and the book of Revelation. Now, jump down to verse 16. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. God made two great lights. What are these lights? Finish the verse. The greater light to rule the day, which we call what? The sun. The sun and the greater light to rule the, or the lesser light to rule the night, which we call what? The moon. The moon. So we can see here in the scripture that Christ created. Christ, by the way, was the creator. You can see that all through the New Testament. Christ created the sun and the moon. Now, we're supposed to have sun, right? Sunshine is something that God created for us to be able to have for our health. Now, are we going to have sun and the new earth after Christ comes and we have the, uh, the earth made new? Well, I believe we will. The temple in Revelation 21 says that there is no need of the sun, but it's referring to no need of the sun in the temple. Okay? It doesn't mean that the sun won't exist. That's, I'm just gathering that from the text. I'm not saying that the text says either, but I'm saying that it's potential that the sun does exist. But what's interesting is the rest of, the, the rest of that verse says that we have no need of the sun. Why? Because the Father and the Lamb are the light thereof. Okay, so we will have sunlight in the new earth, but it's S-O-N. Right? So we'll have the Father and the Son giving us light. God and the Lamb will be the light thereof. So now, jump down in Genesis chapter 1 to verse 29. We've already seen water. We've already seen sunlight. Now we're going to see the next thing. It says there in Revelation 1 verse 29, God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for what? For food. The word is meat, but um, you don't really get flesh off of trees, right? Fruit and flesh don't really go together from a tree. So the word meat doesn't mean flesh meat, it just simply means food. Now, when the Bible is talking about flesh, it actually uses the word flesh, okay? So if we were to eat flesh, we wouldn't be eating this word meat. We would be eating flesh. So this right here is actually talking about fruits that were on the tree. So what's interesting is you have here a pure, healthy diet, which in our New Start scenario, that would start it out, we call it nutrition, right? Sometimes people have old trition. <laughs> But we want nutrition. We want nutrition that's going to help us and it's going to empower us to live a healthy life. Now, do you know that in the, new t in the Old, I'm sorry, in the New Testament, in the New Earth, we're going to be able to eat. And do you think we're going to have old trition there or nutrition? <laughs> we're going to have nutrition. In fact, what are we going to be eating in the New Earth? Exactly. We're going to be eating from the tree of life every single month. You know why? Because we will have life, eternal life, that is derived from the Son of God. And so the life that we will have being derived from Him, we will need to come back and gather that meat from the tree, the fruit from the tree that we'll eat every single month. Okay? That's in Revelation chapter 21 as well, or 22 rather, as well. I can give you the references if you're interested. Just ask me for that. And uh, I'll send you a PDF that I have prepared for this event. So now jump in your Bible to Revelation chapter 22. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 2. I said Revelation 22. Genesis chapter 2. Notice verse 2. It says, On the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So now, on the seventh day, what did God do? He rested. God gave us an example of how to keep the day that basically memorializes or commemorates his creation week. 
Because God created the, work, the week, the, rather the world, in how many days? Six. Six days. And then he rested the seventh. So the week after, after giving example to Adam and Eve, he showed Adam and Eve, after they had worked for a week, that they too are to do the same thing. So then we have here already, we've seen water, we've seen sunlight, we've seen nutrition, and now we can see rest. You see that? Well, the next thought, um, in the book of Revelation, you, we also will have rest. How will we have rest? I'll, I'll read to you just a portion. It says um, in Revelation 21, verse 22, we will have the ability to, um, in fact, I don't remember what that one says. So I'm going to read it real quick. Revelation 21, verse 22. It says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now, I bet you I've got a wrong reference there. Let's see, rest. What's that? Oh, I thought you were talking to me. But there is a reference in Isaiah 66, verse 23, which says that every single week we're going to come and keep the Sabbath to worship the Lord. So we are going to, not necessarily in Revelation 21, verse 22, but it, we, you can you see in Isaiah 66, I believe it is, verse 23, that we will be able to keep the Sabbath to rest even all through eternity. So you can see in Genesis chapter 2, and uh, at least Isaiah tw uh, 66, that we'll be able to rest just as God did in his creation week. So now, when God was bending over his newly shaped man, the first man whose name was what? Adam. What did he do? He breathed into his nostrils the what? The breath of life. Now, Adam, after he received that breath of life, he started inhaling and exhaling. Do you think what he was inhaling and exhaling was pure air? Oh, yes. And so I believe we're also to have that pure air that God desired for us to have at the beginning and what he desires us to have at the end. Because what is at the end, after the uh, recreation of the earth, what is it that God has made new that will kind of house our air, if you will? He made a new heavens and a new earth, right? You can read that in Revelation 21, verses 1 and 2. So you can see that even in the creation story and in eternity future, we have the ability to have fresh air. Okay, just like what God did with Adam at the very beginning. Now jump to verse 15 of Genesis 2. Verse 15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. So anybody ever worked in a garden? You've worked in a garden. I have too. And when you are working with things, like for us, pulling weeds, they didn't have weeds at this time when God told Adam to dress and keep it. But for us, when we're working in the garden, it's, it's exercise, isn't it? You're bending down, you're bending up, you're, or you're, how do you say, squatting down, you're standing up, you're bending over, you're pulling things, you're filling up your wheelbarrow, you're pushing a wheelbarrow, you're carrying water or running the hose back and forth, whatever it is, there was exercise involved. And so in the same principle, we could say that Adam was given exercise to do in uh, Genesis chapter 2, and I think it was verse, did I say 15? 2 verse 15, which again says, The Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. Now, notice verse 17 real quick. Oh, by the way, there is going to be exercise in the new earth. Did you know that? Because the Bible says in Revelation 21, that we're going to be able to walk in the light. That's what it says. We'll be able to walk in the light of the city. So then, it talks about in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Now this could refer to the trust in God. God had said, don't eat of the tree, right? And Adam heard that. Eve heard that. In fact, it may be at this point. Let's see. This point, Eve hadn't been um, brought forth yet from the side of Adam, from his rib. So God first told Adam, who was then to tell Eve. So God told Adam, don't eat of the tree. And so when he ate, or rather, when he heard that, he should have trusted in God, knowing better than trusting in his wife 
who had been deceived, right? Because if you read chapter 3, you realize the woman had gone and listened to the serpent. She trusted his word more than her husband's word, which had learned directly from God. And she decided to listen to the serpent, and then she brought the fruit over to the man who ate it because he unfortunately thought, well, if I lose her, who else will I have? He had already asked the question, hey, the, the goats have a male and a female, and the cows have a male and a female, so do the cats and the rabbits. But uh, where's my woman? And so when God gave him that woman, which we read later at the end of Genesis chapter 2, you realize like he was thinking, well, wait a minute, if I lose her, who am I going to have? Without realizing God could have created another Eve, he decided that he would follow her. That's where he got into trouble, you see. Yeah, uh uh-oh. And so he should have had trust in God, which he didn't. And we know that in Revelation chapter 22, or 21, I don't remember, I think it's 21, the Bible says we will not... Well, we will be able to trust in God. How? We won't have to close the gates of the city. The gates will stay open. And why, why does that mean we can trust? Well, we don't have fear there. We don't have the worry of somebody coming up and stealing our stuff, right? So we can trust that God is keeping us safe, leaving the gates open. Come on and leave anytime you want. There's no, like, fears and locks there. So I think we can find the same principle. What we've seen so far is that in Genesis, we've seen the new start principles, except for temperance, I'll look at that one a little bit. But we've seen um, fresh water, we've seen the sunlight, we've seen nutrition, we've seen rest, we've seen fresh air. Did I already say that one? I said water at the beginning, now we're talking about air. We've talked about exercise, we've talked about trust in God, And we can see every one of those principles in Genesis. We can see every one of those principles in Revelation 21 and 22. Now what's interesting is you can see temperance in every single one of those things. How so? And what is temperance? First, let's define temperance. What is temperance? Anybody have a thought? Moderation, sure. Self-control, okay. Um, How does it go? Maybe my wife can remember this one. Abstaining from that which is harmful and eating in moderation that which is good. Something like that. Consuming in moderation that which is good. So abstaining from that which is harmful completely and using that which is healthful in moderation. That's the idea of temperance as far as eating is concerned. And now think about this. What about the first one we looked at? Water, okay, fresh water, that you'll also have in eternity future. Do you need temperance when you're working with water? Yes. Why? It can kill you if you drink too much of it. Well, sure, if you drink too much of it, or if you end up in the, suit, in the drink, right? And you, don't, you have too much water, you can what? <coughs> Drown, right? You so if you get... You can die from drinking a gallon of water. You could, I used to drink a gallon of water a lot, actually, <laughs> during my days in, in Minnesota. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, wow. She killed herself by drinking too much water. So, okay, you could do that. So we need temperance by not having too much. What about having too little water? Is there a problem with that? We call that dehydration, right? Okay, so there's temperance built into the God-given gift of water, right? Okay, so the next thing. What about sunlight? Can you get too much sunlight? And you felt that on your back, haven't you? Oh yeah, see, I've almost drowned two times. Two times I've I've nearly drowned, and it was very scary both times. The second was even scarier than the first time. But there was a time in in Florida where I was surfing with some friends, and uh, you know, I thought, hey, I can do this. I'm half Mexican. And so I went out there, and uh, all day long I was surfing. Well, it, uh, that night, I felt like there were needles in my back all the way over. And there was nothing I can do. I was trying to put lotion on myself, and, it, you know, it was trouble, very serious trouble. Well, so you can get too much sun. What about too little sun? If you get too little sun, your body is depleted from vitamin D and other vit- minerals, and you can, therefore, receive things like depression, okay? So that's just one example of what could happen if you have too little sun. So even in sunshine, God has built in temperance. And a lot of this just comes with logic, you know. Hey, I've been out in the sun a little too long and I'm starting to turn red. I better get inside. That makes sense, right? I haven't seen the sun forever and I'm so depressed. I don't want to do anything. Well, get out in the sun. What about the next one, which is, hmm, help me, nutrition. Can you eat too much food? Oh, yeah. 
We know that, I mean, there's a problem with that in some places in our world. People have eaten too much food. What about if you eat too little? Okay, then we have problems with that in our world too. People have eaten too little food and we call them, what do we call them? Anorexic, malnourished, starving. Sure, we have all those terms and that's what happens when we don't follow the basic principles of temperance in that which we have to eat. Okay, now what about rest? The next idea in Genesis. Go ahead. Sure. And uh-huh. how God has built temperance in the food. If you eat the food and it's whole corn, uh-huh. it's very difficult to eat too much. Good point. Too little, you know, if you eat until you're satisfied. Like olives, for example, it's hard to eat maybe a whole can a month. Unless you're me. <laughs> I could do that. I could challenge that. But. <laughs> oranges. Yeah. People don't sit down and eat, you know, 20 oranges or whatever, but a nice whole glass of orange juice would have about that many. And we all like orange juice, don't we? <laughs> so that just to sum up what she said, if you are trying to eat too much of what's healthy for you, it's very difficult. You get to a point where you're like, wow, I don't even want any more because you're not stuffed full, but you're like satisfied. <laughs> And I know because I've eaten a lot of just raw meals, and it's true, it's hard to stuff yourself. And by the way, you can put a lot of raw stuff in your belly too. You can eat a lot of food. But uh, so now we've seen that there's temperance built into all these so far. What's the next one? Rest. Can you get too much rest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your muscles will what? Atrophy is what it's called. They'll weaken. Yeah, you you lose the ability to to work with your muscles if you don't get enough, uh, or if you get too much rest. What if you don't get enough rest? There's trouble there too, right? Now, I've worked out many times in my life, and they're, okay, just cutting wood, for example, loading up a bunch of wood in the back of a truck, that can really bring some sore muscles. Well, it's good to a point, but if you do that to too much of a point, uh, in fact, there's a guy that I remember um, reading about that he was trying to um, weight lift for the Olympics, He was lifting so much and so many times that he actually broke one of his, what do you call that? Um, What connects your bone, your muscle to your, yeah, he broke a tendon and his muscle just literally ended up at the bottom of his, like near the other side of his uh, elbow. So like he's done, that's it. You you, you know, you're not going to be doing that anymore. So we could actually go too far with that. What about the next thing? Fresh air. What happens to nurses? What happens to people if they get too much air in their blood. They die, exactly. You can't get too much air in your blood. What happens if you don't get enough air? Yeah. There was one time where I was, before I was a Christian, I was asphyxiated and passed out in a room that backed up with the, uh, the smoke of the furnace. Okay? So I don't know except that my mother was praying for me. My friend who, I was not a Christian, he was not a Christian, He wakes up at three in the morning and says, where's my friend? He was staying at the night at my house, but I had passed out on the couch down below, you know, like literally half a mile away. So he gets in his vehicle, drives around to find out where I am, finds where I am, because, you know, there weren't very many options. He comes in, he's like, Mesa, you're going to die. Get out of here, man. He pulls me out of there. I had no idea, and neither would I have. I just would have kept sleeping, right? So if you, you can not have enough air, and that's part of breaking the temperance idea of fresh air. So you see how they all work, very common knowledge, common sense in, in each of these temperance, built-in temperance ideas of the new start idea that you find in Genesis and Revelation. So now let's go to the next one. The next one was exercise, right? We already talked about exercise, didn't we, with yes. too much and too little? Um, we talked about fresh air. We talked about water. So I think we've, we've dealt with all of them, haven't we? Okay, trust. Can you trust too much? Can you be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good? You know? Can you, can you say like that old story where somebody's, um, the, the storm is coming and he says, oh Lord, save me. And so a man comes out with an umbrella and says, hey man, you might want to get under here. Oh no, the Lord's going to take care of me, I prayed. 
And so pretty soon the water, the, the water comes rushing down the mountain and it's filling up around his house and he says, oh Lord, save me. And the, the fire department comes and says, hey, grab onto this hook at the end of, at the end of our ladder. We're going to be able to, you can climb up and, and walk down the ladder. We can't reach you otherwise. Oh, no, 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 the Lord's going to save me. He, I've been praying about it. And so pretty soon the water's like ready to take away his home and the, the helicopter comes down and says, hey, grab the ladder. We're going to be able to save you. Oh no, the Lord's going to bless me. Right? I've, I've been praying. The Lord's got... It, can you be so trusting that you're not logical? Yeah, you could. What about no trust? Is that safe? No. Absolutely not. So I appeal to every one of you. Trust in God. Trust in the Bible. This is what will lead you to eternal life, which is in his Son, Jesus Christ. And so we can see, just really quickly, from Genesis to Revelation, from the very beginning of creation all the way to eternity in the future, we have the New Start health principles, all eight of them, that uh, have, well, seven of them that have temperance built into them, that you can also find in the new earth that God has designed for us, so that will, he will design for us. So the idea is, God is, is trying to lead us from creation after the fall up into redemption so he can give us again the same kind of life that he offered to Adam and Eve. Amen. I want that. How about you? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for blessing us with this opportunity to look just a little bit about what the Bible says in regard to the health that you've given us in all the different facets. The new, the new start program or the eight doctors that we can find in Genesis and in Revelation. Help us please to understand more fully what it means to trust in you and to be uh, logical and thoughtful in the different things you've given us, whether it be air or rest or um, exercise. And we just thank you for blessing us with this opportunity to look at the Bible together and pray you'd continue to guide us in Jesus' name. Amen.